Hey guys, Drew Out in Tech here to go over Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So what is Red Hat Enterprise Linux? Well, you probably already guessed by now, but it's a Linux distribution. But specifically, it's a Linux distribution designed for, well, you guessed it, enterprise use, hence the name Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Now, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which I like to refer to as Red Hat for simplicity, is kind of unique in that instead of just being freeware that you can just download and use at no charge, Red Hat has a subscription model where you basically subscribe to the subscription model and you get support from the Red Hat team, which isn't really a big deal for regular home users, especially when we got search engines at our disposal. But for a business or organization who's dealing with mission critical workloads, having a dedicated line of support where you can just call up a tech support person can actually be very valuable and can really help a business get a problem solved much faster than if they were to try to solve it on their own with just the help of the internet. And as you may know, time is money especially in big business. And these businesses can't really afford a whole lot of downtime. So there's that. And another feature of Red Hat Enterprise Linux is remote management, which allows a sysadmin to, for example, update all their systems, which could be thousands upon thousands in their enterprise with just one click all at once, instead of having to manually go to it for every single system, which as you may imagine, can save loads of time. Now, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is great for both server and desktop use, and I'll be mainly looking at the desktop in this video. I don't really have time to delve into the server realm, but I will say that while these benefits make perfect sense for a business or organization, they don't really provide much of a benefit to regular home users like you and I, who can get away with just installing Ubuntu or Linux Mint on our personal computers and calling it a day. However, if you're an individual, there is actually a way to get Red Hat Enterprise Linux for free for non-production use. And the way to do that is to sign up for a Red Hat developer account in order to get a free Red Hat developer subscription, which will then allow you to download a Red Hat Enterprise Linux ISO at no charge. And I'll show you how to do that in this video. And of course, if you're using Red Hat in a production environment, especially as a business or organization, then you do have to obviously pay for it. But without further ado, I'm gonna go over how to download Red Hat at no charge for individuals who are looking to use it in a non-production environment. And I'll install it and take a brief look at it. All right, so we're gonna head over to developer.redhat.com. And by the way, I'll have this link in the description. But anyway, what we have to do is log into our Red Hat account. Now, if you don't have a Red Hat account, I'm assuming most of you don't, that's no problem. It's free, you just have to create an account. Pardon me while I go sign in. All right, now once we're signed in, we're gonna go up here to products and technologies, and then Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And then we're gonna click this red download rel at no cost, which rel stands for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And then it should go download that. Now I've actually already got this downloaded. So what I'm gonna do is create a new virtual machine to install this to. And by the way, if you were wanting to install this on bare metal, all you have to do is just flash it to a flash drive and then boot from that flash drive. And then you can install Red Hat Enterprise Linux from there on bare metal. But anyway, I'm gonna select my Red Hat ISO and my virtual machine software automatically detected Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.0. That's the latest version at the time of shooting this video. And for CPU and RAM, I'm gonna be a little bit more generous with the RAM. Four gigs should be enough and two cores should be fine. That's half of what I have on my host system. And for size, I'm only gonna give it like 20 gigs because I'm not really planning on doing much with this Red Hat instance. And I'm probably just gonna completely wipe it out after I'm finished. And rel 9.0 is a good name for it. So let's click finish here, which will go create our virtual machine, boot it up, and then 
we can get into installing Red Hat. So let's install Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.0. All right, and we can actually abort this check by pressing escape just to speed things along. All right, and then finally we're in the Red Hat installer. Now, I apologize that this does not fill up the screen. I'll fix that once we've got it installed, but I'm gonna select English as my language. And now here we've gotta do a few things here. Our keyboard layout and language works fine. And it got my time zone correct. So here is where we connect to our Red Hat account. Pardon me while I go punch that in. All right, and then here, this will allow us to set our system purpose. I'm not gonna really bother with the system purpose for now. And I don't think I really need to worry about these extra options here. So I'm gonna register this. There you go, the system is registered. I'm gonna click done, and I guess it automatically changed my installation source to Red Hat CDN in order to get the latest and greatest from Red Hat. You can change it right here if you would like. And then here we can actually select our base environment and any additional software that we want. For us, in our case, we want Workstation, and we can select any additional software that we want here. I'm actually gonna go get GNOME and internet applications, and an office suite. And I am curious what these security tools are, and I think that's pretty much it. Okay, now we get to the most important part, which is partitioning, or rather installation destination. I'm gonna go select this drive here, and since I have nothing on this drive, or rather this virtual drive, we can just automatically configure our storage. And I'm not gonna bother with making any additional space available or encrypting my data, but anyway, I'm gonna click done, and our network looks good. Let's actually look at security profiles here, and here we've got different security standards we can go by. I'm gonna go with this draft here, select that profile. It's actually demanding that we create a lot of partitions here, so I'm actually not gonna bother with the security profile. Anyway, now we get to the user settings. For the root account, I'm just gonna leave that as disabled. I'm just gonna be doing administration via sudo. But anyway, now let's create our user account. And I actually generally like my username to be Drew. Yes, make this user as an administrator and require a password to use the account. Or actually in this case, no, since it's in a virtual machine that's already protected by my host system login. I wonder what's on these advanced options. We can actually specify a user group ID manually and configure what groups we wanna add our user to. But anyway, let's just hit done. And now this all looks good, so we can begin our installation. And it's gonna go install Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, now that Red Hat Enterprise Linux finished installing, all we have to do is reboot the system, which will then boot us into our new Red Hat installation. And all we have to do now is just log in. Alrighty, and now this brings us to our GNOME desktop. Looks like this is running on GNOME 40. So now we can look at the system settings before we go much farther. We can see that we got Red Hat Enterprise Linux here. And I'm actually gonna change this device name to something more meaningful like RHEL 9.0 which is what I called this VM. And we can see our system information here. And yes, we have GNOME 40 and RHEL 9 uses Wayland as its default display manager, looks like. But anyway, this is basically what you'd expect from a standard GNOME desktop. We've got the default background here, which I'm actually curious what backgrounds this ships with. I know I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here. Some of these actually look good. Eh, I kind of like this one. But anyway, let's look at our applications here. We've got our LibreOffice suite here, along with other GNOME applications. And we even have HexChat, which is an IRC client installed by default, and Bracera, which is a CD burning application. And you've got Evolution as our email client, and we've got some other core GNOME utilities. And this is where you'd go if you ever want to take the tour of the GNOME 40 desktop again. Most of this stuff you'd expect from a standard GNOME desktop, except for these two applications. And this is where we get into the enterprise part of this distribution, specifically the Red Hat Subscription Manager, which I actually have to authenticate for. And the only reason why I didn't prompt me for my password there is because I didn't set up a password. Of course, just to be clear, I wouldn't do that if I were installing it on bare metal. But since I was installing it on a virtual machine, I was like, you know, it's already protected by my host system login. And I'm not really using this for anything much, and I'm probably just gonna delete this virtual machine anyway after I'm finished with this video. But anyway, this basically allows us to manage our Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. And you can see when my developer subscription starts and ends. Basically after that, you need to then log into the developer 
portal again in order to renew it in this case. And this is also where you go if you wanted to unregister your developer subscription and that's pretty much it. Anyway, let's actually look at the SE Linux troubleshooter, see what that's all about. Basically gives us solutions for any problems you may run into with SE Linux. That's actually kind of smart, although we don't really have much use for this since we haven't triggered any SE Linux alerts. But anyway, I think that's it to see for the actual system. Now I want to show you what the web portal is like, which I can do that on my host system. All right, so from access.redhat.com if you go into subscriptions and you'll probably have to log in. So we've got our active subscriptions here and by the way that basically gives you an overview of your subscriptions. So we've got our developer subscription and even beta access and if we go into our systems here we can look at our systems. I was actually experimenting with another virtual machine which is now deleted so I'm actually going to go remove that from my Red Hat account. No reason to have that on there. But anyway let's go to our machine here which is called localhost.local domain. So basically we get the details of our system. I'm actually going to go change this to rel 9.0 and this is also where we could specify our system purpose if we wanted to. All right and finally the installed packages function worked on my my access.redhat.com. Basically what I had to do is go to console.redhat.com, click on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and then Red Hat Insights. And then I had to go to register systems, basically tell it about my system. I'm on rel 8.4 and up because I'm on rel 9. And I use the Red Hat subscription manager. And then I basically had to run this command for it to, for the system to report to Red Hat Insights. I know I probably should have got it registered in the installer, but whatever, I guess I grossly misunderstood it. But anyway, let's see what packages have updates available. Looks like nothing. And I think that's all I have to show for remote management. Sorry that wasn't quite as in-depth as I'd hoped. But there's also a lot of other stuff that you can do on access.redhat.com and console.redhat.com that is very useful to enterprises, like checking up on potential security issues and getting those patched as quickly as possible, and setting security policies. But anyway, very, very last thing I want to do before I wrap up this video is in order to update the system via the GUI, just go into software and then updates. And then in order to check for updates, just click that little refresh button and then it'll go check for updates. It looks like our system is up to date since we installed this directly from the Red Hat CDN. So this is going to be the most up to date. But anyway, that's it for this video. I think you know what to do. Like it if you liked it, share it with your friends, hit the big red subscribe button and turn on bell notifications, leave a comment, all that good stuff, and see you next time.